Michael Flowers. So today we're talking about finding your range in a street fight. Now, finding your range in a street fight is really super important. It works typically when it's man-on-man -man combat, mutual combat. We both kind of like step outside the bar and agree to put our dukes up, right? Or like road rage, we both get out and we're like being dumbasses about it. That type of deal. Not necessarily in an ambush, not necessarily in like, you know, uh, a straight up, like we all rush madly into each other and uh, like start wrestling. Like that's doesn't really matter because range doesn't apply. Range definitely does apply when you're trying to figure out the skill level of the other fighter. All right. So that's the first and foremost thing that I want to figure out is what's his skill level. And I'm finding out the secondly, what my range is, how close do I need to be or how far away do I need to be to hit him without getting hit back necessarily. But the most important thing about finding your range in a street fight is judging what his skill level is. All right. So if I come here and we're we're going to box. I want to just throw a jab, right? All I'm going to do, the first fucking thing I'm going to do is throw a jab. If he blocks it, I know he's a defensive fighter. And I know that he's got some training. If he, instead of blocking it, as soon as I throw, if he throws right back, I know that he's got some skill and he's an aggressive fighter. If he leans back, again, I know that he's a more defensive fighter. If he shoots in for a takedown, Go ahead and just change levels and, and just act like you're going to do a double leg. I know I'm dealing with a wrestler, right? In any case, I can sprawl. I can deal with it as it comes. But throwing a jab really, really, really tells me a lot about who I'm fighting. Maybe it's the fact where I throw a jab, he throws one back, and I decide, fuck this. I want to go and I want to hug it up and I want to get grappling with him, right? And I want to just close the range, close the distance. I don't want to fight a boxer. Or maybe he goes ahead and uh, blocks it. And I know, okay, this is the level of person that I'm dealing with. If he blocks it like this, it teach me, teaches me that he's a boxer. If he blocks it like this, it teaches me he, maybe he does some karate, right? Or maybe even some Muay Thai. Um, you know, if he blocks it like this, it tells me he's a Muay Thai guy. It tells me a lot of information. It gives me a lot of intelligence as to ha how to handle this fight. Again, I might decide I need to crash through his guard, hug it up with him. I might decide this is the most best option. I might decide that boxing with him is the best option. But in any case, I now know this is how far away I need to be. He might throw something back at me, and he can't necessarily touch my chin, right? He can't necessarily score a great knockout shot. I have the longer reach. Now again, this is happening within microseconds. It takes experience to kind of be able to judge this quickly. But if you guys, and I know a lot of you guys out there, most of you who watch this channel, fairly seasoned fighters, fairly high fight IQ. So this will definitely work for you to get a good idea of what the other experience level of the guy is all through throwing a simple, simple jab. All right. And a jab is such a low risk option. Like I'm going to throw a jab, Mike throw something back at me. It's so low risk. All that can really happen is throw a body shot at me. Right here. Bah, bah. All right. It, there's not a lot that can go wrong just after throwing one jab. That's why I like the jab. Obviously, all the MMA guys out there, we throw a lot of jabs. All the boxers out there are like heavy with the jabs. You could throw a double jab. So if, uh, if I'm uh, going to throw a jab and you're just going to block, he blocks, maybe I throw a double jab. Boom, boom, right down to the body. And again, how he reacts from that will tell me his experience level. So if I throw a jab, he blocks, and I throw a jab to the body, and he comes down here like that, I know, all right, well, he's done this before. But instead, if I throw a jab and he blocks and he doesn't block and it, it clearly like upsets him that he got hit, I know hey, the guy's got a little bit of training, but I probably have a little room to dance, right? So try it um, next time you're on the bag, all right? You can train this solo as well. By the way, we've got a great solo training DVD. I keep calling it a DVD. It's just my fucking age. Um, I've got a great solo training program coming out on gutterfightingsecrets.com. But... I want you to think about this for your solo training. Next time you're on the bag, just think about throwing that jab and figuring out how close or how far away do I need to be to get a decent hit on it and have it not hit me back if it had arms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, and then just come back. But, and then come back. Maybe lean back a little bit. I always like to keep my hand up here. So again, Mike, throw a jab back at me. And that's why I keep my hand right up here and I keep it open, right? And I'm not just letting him run right into it, I am kind of like slapping it out. So it's like that, right? And I catch it and I can even catch it, leave it out. I can catch it and slap it down, come over top, something like that. That's kind of a, 
it's almost like a, not really a Philly shell, but I don't know what they call it. I'm sure the, um, what's the prison system fighting style, uh, skull of bones. I'm sure those guys have a name for it, but whatever. Anyway, you know my opinion on that system. Boom, boom. All right. So find my range, find my range, hit me back. All right. And maybe sometimes it slips through. Find my range. It slips through. All right. Not the end of the world. I'm at least shelled up enough here that I can come in and get under hooks and start dealing with it. Right. It gets through. All right, shit, I took a shot. All right, not the end of the world. Like, it's going to hurt. But I'm going to come and I'm going to grapple in with him because I know. All right, shit, I like that was a stupid move. I miscalculated. I took a hit. I don't want to get hit again. So instead of having to stand out here with a boxer, Mike's an advanced student, right? So if I'm going to fight him, so I, I, I may, maybe I'll get hit. I'm going to either overhook and start throwing elbows or I'm going to come in here. Go ahead. I get hit. Shit, I get hit. All right. I don't want to get hit again, and I'm going to deal with the situation from here. So that's how I think about it. Just find your range, and that's going to really bring your fight IQ from here to here. Go to FightingSecrets.com is the website. You are your first and last line of defense, and I'll see you next time with the flowers. Cheers.